Good evening ladies and gentlemen, ZA Linux Dev here again with another tutorial video. Have you ever wondered what it would look like if you wrote some unit tests to cover some classes in a C-sharp.net core project on Linux? Well, tonight you're going to find out and I'm going to show you exactly how. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you actually have .NET Core installed. I already made a video with that. And if you want to see what that looks like, have a look at the other side. There's a card there. Just have a look at that video and it'll walk you through uh, getting .NET Core set up. So without further ado, let's create our project, shall we? I'm going to first things first, create a folder or a directory and I'm going to call it .NET. That should contain our solution. I'm going to CD into that. Great. So now we need to add two libraries. The first library is where our logic is going to lie. And the second library is where our unit tests are going to run. So we'll .NET new class lib. And we'll just call this library dash in library because that's how inventive we are tonight. So it's creating the class library. Great. Now we need to create a .NET new um, X unit, which is the uh, uh, testing project that we're going to create. So that's how you do it with .NET. Uh, we'll call that guy tests because again, very, very inventive. Great. Okay, obviously our unit tests need to know about the classes that we want to test. And um, how do we do that? We are going to go .NET add to the tests project, a reference to the library project. Ah, not .new, .net, little typo there. There we go, so we've added a reference. Okay, so what I want to do now is actually start doing some code. So I'm going to firstly um, change directory into our library folder and I'm going to list the contents. I don't like the default class names that get generated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move class one to the class.cs. So this will be our testing or our class that we want to test uh, rather. I'm going to do a nano on the class. Just going to do a basic method here. Let's uh, just rename the class to the class. Uh, let's do a public integer do sum because that's the most complex thing we can do, right? Integer y. Um, return x plus y. Great. Cool. So I've saved that and I've exited. Um, let's change directory into our tests folder let's list that again unit tests very generic i want to rename that i'm going to say move unit test one to the class tests.cs and i'm going to nano the class tests great first things first we need to add a reference to our library because otherwise the unit tests ain't gonna know what class we're talking about I'm just going to rename this public class to the you know, the class tests. Um, the first test. Let's give it a proper description. Do sum when given two ints should return sum. Right? Because that's what the method does. It adds the two together. I'm going to expand a little bit here on the uh, method signature. Just to give some parameters, because I'm not going to be using the fact here. I am going to use a theory because with a theory, we can supply a bunch of inline datas. And that means that we can create many different tests to cover for the same scenario on the same method. Basically, what's going to happen is X unit is going to run with this data, this unit test every time with all of these different inline datas. So let's add another one. 
and I'll show you what I mean, inline data. So let's say negative two plus negative three should give me negative five. And that's another test case. Inline data, um, let's say negative two plus two should give me a zero. And um, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to be starting, I'm going to start adding the um, logic to our test. So we work with our basic range act assert. Um, so what I do is a var the class equals a new the class. Great. Var sum equals, so we want to call the method now, uh, the class dot do sum and i'm going to supply these values up top here this x and this y and then i want to do an assert that they are equal to the expected value the sum so in other words what i'm checking is that if i add one and one do i get in fact two back from the class dot do sum and i think for now that should be enough um, if I didn't make any logic, logical problem errors, compiler errors, everything should be fine. I'm going to run the unit tests now. And you do that by just executing the command within the unit tests folder .NET test. It's going to build the project. And it looks like everything's good so far. Yes. And now it's starting to execute my unit tests. You'll see that there were three tests that, uh, that ran. And um, basically, all of them ran within three seconds and all of them passed. Um, if you want to see what a failed test look, looks like, that's quite easy to obviously simulate. We'll just uh, nano back into our unit tests and we'll supply some inline data that is incorrect. So we'll say, for instance, 2 plus 2 equals 5, which is never going to be the case. Let's run the unit tests again. And there you see we have one failed uh, test case. It actually tells you uh, the input was two and two. We expected five, uh, but we actually got back four. So now obviously the unit test is incorrect. So we can go ahead and fix that. I'm not gonna do that in this video. Um, I do hope that uh, you guys found this video useful and um, yeah go forth and write some unit tests so guys that's how easy it is to write a uh, unit test library in dotnet core on linux to test your c-sharp code i hope you guys go forth and automate all of your classes write some proper unit tests do some tdd do it the way it's supposed to be done because it saves your butt on many an occasion i can attest to that Anyway, without keeping you guys here any longer, this is ZA Linux Dev signing out. Have a good one.